Thank you for joining us on the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel as we prepare to close out this unusual year. A year that uh, most of us have been spared from uh, and some have been delivered from and through a great pandemic. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We give you thanks for the way that you continue to manifest yourself in our lives uh, through your Son and your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, our text uh, for this week comes from Matthew chapter 2, verse 9 through 11, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version. That's Matthew chapter 2, verse 9 through 11. Uh, verse 9 says, After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen be, when uh, it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. I want to talk uh, for uh, a few minutes about they brought gifts to God's gift to us. They brought gifts to God's gift to us. When what we have uh, comes together with what... Uh, God has given us what we are blessed to the highest degree. When we give the best of our service in God's will, we can be assured that God will say of us like he did his son, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And, 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 and throughout uh, the, the gospels, God praised his son uh, for doing and obeying him. Whatever our gift may be, they are only a portion of what God has already given us. And, 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 and uh, Psalms 24 verse 1 says, uh, The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. In essence, everything belongs to the God, to God, and Whatever we have is just a portion of what God has already given us. And through tithing and offering, then that's one way that we practice our relationship on a regular basis of uh, our relationship with God because God is a giver. And just like it was, uh, he taught us to love because he first loved us, showing us how to love. And now he shows us how to worship through giving, because he first gave us. Uh, we must be reminded of the importance of preserving a portion of, of whatever God has given us for the coming of Jesus Christ in our life. We must always have something and be prepared to give something back. And a lot of times we do that in what we do in service for others, what we give to others to help them to make it through uh, whatever they're going through. And, and, and God wants us to be cheerful givers, not grumbling givers. Now, let, walk with me through the text. Perhaps the star in verse 2, uh, whatever it was, was so bright that the men could see it as they traveled, even in daylight. You remember when, when uh, Paul, uh, who was Saul at the time, saw Jesus, he saw him as a, as a light that was brighter than the noonday S-U-N. The S-O-N of God was shining brighter than the S-U-N. And, and, and that, would, that would kind of help us to understand this situation. Now, travelers uh, usually traveled at night because that was common to avoid the heat. 
So they might have made their five-mile trip south to, to Bethlehem at night. But nevertheless, this would have been in the wintertime when they were traveling. And so they probably traveled during the daylight hours. The star may have identified Bethlehem as the town where Jesus could be found. On the other hand, the star may have identified the very house where Jesus and Mary were. This seems to be more likely in view with verse 11, and, and, and God supernaturally guided the seekers as he always have and always does. God, if, if, if we could just look back on our lives, we can see how God guides us even when we don't even know where we're going. God has a plan and purpose for our lives, and he guides us to the death's destination for the, to fulfill that plan. And we will always receive gifts when God can get us where he wants us to go. Now, God's provisions gave these men great joy. It's amazing that God can guide us to where his son is uh, though we don't even know our destination. The reaction of these men to discovering the child and his mother was to bow down and worship him, Jesus. Notice that they did not worship Mary, nor did they worship Jesus through Mary. They worshiped him, Jesus himself. Now, it was customary in the ancient uh, Near East uh, to present gifts when approaching a superior. The wise men produced these from their treasures. The expensive gifts reflected the great honor the Magi, uh, astrologers in this day and age they would be called, bestowed upon the Christ child. The gold probably financed Joseph and Mary's trip to Egypt. And that gives us an idea of how God provides what we need before we need it. Just like he did uh, Jonah, there's a great lesson in the story of Jonah that how jo Jonah uh, uh, went and bought a ticket to go one place on a ship and, and God uh, uh, intervened and Jonah ended up getting thrown overboard, but then he met up with God's plan transportation for him to get him to Nineveh. I often say, uh, if we uh, go where God wants us to go, he will handle all of the expenses. Now, frankincense is a gum obtained from the resin of certain trees that were particularly fragrant. Now, myrrh was also a sap-like substance that came from a tree that grew in Arabia. And people used it as a spice and as a perfume, often for embalming even, as uh, well as for other applications. Many commentators, ancient and modern, have seen symbolic significance in these three gifts. And some have said gold suggests the royalty, while others have said deity. Some say incense represents deity, while others believe it's better representing uh, perfect humanity that Jesus uh, represented. Now, most expositors view the myrrh as suggesting Jesus' death and burial. It's unlikely that the magi uh, saw this significance, but Matthew may have intended his readers to see it. Uh, God supernaturally intervened to keep the Magi's from returning to Herod, who would have then been able from them to target exactly where Jesus was. And remember, they were they they wanted to kill to, to get rid of to eliminate to to uh what do they call it uh well i move on uh when you when you, uh, they wanted they they basically had a contract out for jesus come back and tell us where he's at and they wanted to go and and kill him 
But God warned these men not to go back the way that they came, but to go back another way. And, and, and in that, it's often uh, reasonable to see that when we meet Jesus, we ought to leave him going a different way in life, a different mindset a different outlook. Instead of an outlook of ho-hum and, and, and grumbling and complaining and, and, and looking for the worst in life to happen to us, we ought to leave Jesus with a positive attitude. Now, John 3.16 uh, gives us an idea of God's uh, uh, gift. We've looked some at the gift that uh, the Magi brought. Now let's look at God's gift. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him would not have, no, would not perish, but shall have everlasting life. So God's gift was a gift of life that had been hoped for all the way since the Garden of Eden incident. And now God is about to deliver this plan that we can go back to where we are, were, uh, where God predetermined that we should be, live forever. And we lost that in the Garden of Eden by disobeying God's word. But now through his son, he's giving us a second opportunity. Genesis chapter 22, verse 7 and 8, and this is about Isaac and his father Abraham's situation that we see in God and his son, Jesus. Abraham and Isaac was just a foreshadow of God and Jesus in this story. Verse 7 says, And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, Father, and he said, Here am I my son. And he said, behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together to the place that God was guiding them to. And remember, God, when Abraham wanted to know where he was going, God told him, I'll show you. And you'll, I'll show you when you get there. And so often, God is wonderful in that way. A lot of times, I believe if God would let us know the route that we had to travel and where he was leading us to, we wouldn't go. So God has a good uh, reason for doing what he doing, what he did. And then verse, uh, uh, chapter 22, verse 12 through 14 says, and he said, God, this is after Abraham makes it to the mountain, the predetermined place, and he's about to slay his son, Isaac. Has, has, has Isaac up on the wood, up on the altar, and the knife drawn back, and he's about to uh, give this special, this only son that God had promised him and finally delivered. Now God wants him back. And he's about to give, give him back. The angel spoke and said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do anything uh, unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering uh, instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh as it is said to this day in the mount of God, God will provide. And in this story, our text today, Matthew chapter 2, verse 9 through 11, uh, it summarizes God uh, providing for uh, a lost humanity. 
God provided the ram to offer for a sacrifice. Now Isaac was spared and God's son uh, had to give his life, but he rose from the dead. So Isaac was just a foreshadow of Jesus as a living sacrifice. And now we as saved believers can see ourselves as living sacrifice as, as Paul uh, expressed it in the book of Romans. He said, I beseech you brethren that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Look at Jesus, that first unblemished lamb holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Let me say, just say this also. What can wash us whiter than snow? Nothing but the blood of the lamb. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now, John chapter one, verse 29 says, the next day he saw Jesus coming towards him and said, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And then first Peter chapter one, verse 19 says, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemishes or spots. He was foreknown before the foundations of the world, but was made manifest in the last days for the sake of you, for all of us. Now, Jesus gave his life so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you, Jesus. I'm thinking about all of the long, many years that God has given the greatest gift ever in his son to so many. The gift that just keeps on giving. And, and, and since we have eternal life now through Jesus Christ, our lives and our testimony can be a gift that keeps on giving to multiple generations. Now, I know you might be tired of uh, this part of the story, but this is the summary of the whole gift to us. And that summary is he died on an old rugged cross on a Friday. They buried him in a borrowed tomb and early the morning, uh, three days later, early in the morning, he rose from the dead with all power in his hand. And, and, and if you will allow him, he's standing with outstretched arms for saying, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, come unto me and I'll give you rest unto your soul. If the pandemic of 2020 has, has wore you out, Jesus is standing with outstretched arms to welcome you into a rest from all that you've gone through. A gift that keeps on giving. Sometimes life will just wear you down, but go to Jesus, who's always standing with outstretched arms, saying, all ye that labor come, and I'll give you rest. And that's all I've got for today, so let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, after being blessed by your written word and your living word, we pray now that you will grow us into being daily a living sacrifice that you can give wonderful gifts to others through our testimony and our lives for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, even though we are this close to the end of the year, uh, it's still enough time for us to make some big mistakes. So be careful. Be very careful. God will guide you as he did the Magi's in finding the safe way to 2021. Wear a mask, practice social distancing, and pray for me because I'm having a hard time being civil with individuals that are not practicing social distancing. When I'm in the grocery store, the lines are there six feet apart 
And when somebody walks right up on me, it's, it's just wearing me down. I'm looking forward to 2021. So let's, uh, let's practice social distancing and pray for one another and uh, practice uh, good hygiene, sanitary hygiene. Wash your hands often. Uh, don't be afraid of the uh, shot, the inoculation from this virus. Uh, we've had many, many uh, vaccines or vaccinations over the years. That was one of the first things we did after we cried our first cry. It took us to, to get vaccines, vaccination. And uh, I, I even uh, had the uh, shingles vaccination. Yearly we get the, the flu vaccination, a vaccine and whatnot. So l let's look at the real deal and don't let someone make you afraid of what can help you. And with that, I'm out of here. Hope you had a merry and a wonderful Christmas and let's look forward to a happy new year. So long.